and our prayers that she recovers from surgery this week. Let us bow our head in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you as humbly as we know how to pray for all of those in need of you today. Those with needs both seen and unseen, heard and unheard. Those on our prayer list and those who are not. We pray for those affected by the news of surge and COVID cases. We pray for the students, the teachers, and the school staff for their safety as they risk it all for education. We pray for people now losing their homes to addiction, people losing their family members unnecessarily, overwhelmed hospital staff, all which is preventable. We also pray for the people of Afghanistan, the women, the children, the Christians, now scared for their lives. Lord, and after you see about all of these people, come see about us here at New Clothes. Lord, bless our finances and our membership, our building and our leadership. Help us to continue to be a blessing to this church and others. This in Jesus' name we pray. feel free to um, ask myself or Reverend Leah. We've both been on planning and calls for that. We are keeping in mind all the COVID regulations and the surges. So if you do not feel comfortable going up to Bethany Hills this year and but would still like to participate, there is a virtual way to do so. Also, the Pride March is also that same day, September 18th. If you are interested in participating, please see Reverend Kaki, who is waving her hand. Her information is also in the bulletin. If you um, are not here today and would like to reach out to her. And also, on that same weekend, September 19th, during worship, we will celebrate with and for um, Dr. Shamika, who will be ordained that Sunday. Yeah, that's what we like. Process, and I know that each and every one of you will want to be in the building um, to celebrate with her and for her and her, those who will come and celebrate with her. So please be mindful of those announcements. Um, also, if there are any concerns that you may have or need um, or have needs, please reach out to the elders. Um, our beloved pastor has taken a few days off for some rest and relaxation, and we honor that. Um, need of hers. We honor the rest that we know our pastors need. And so she is away. Um, so if you need something today, tomorrow, the next few days while she's away, please feel free to reach out to any of the elders. Um, I believe it is uh, Elder Darlene and Elder Beverly this week. But if you cannot reach them, you have all of our information in the toolkit and we are here and available and ready to um, help you as you have needs. Thank you all for coming in.
glad. The invitation is then to all oh, magnify the Lord with me. And, and let us exalt God's name together. Why? Because I sought the Lord and God heard me and delivered me out of all my troubles. Uh, God has a way of, of hearing our cry of pity every moment. I'm so glad that God is so faithful to say yesterday, today, and forevermore. I give honor to that faithful God who hears our cries. I'm grateful for my being here. Uh, it's been almost two years since I've had this privilege, and so I'm honored. Uh, counted not robbery. We thank God for our pastor emeritus, and we thank God that she gets a chance to get a little bit of rest and relaxation. Come on, now we we spiritualize uh, uh, overworking ourselves, you know that, and then we make ourselves sick and unwell and everything. And so we thank God that they have this chance. Uh, her and Deacon Chan to just get away and if they're watching God bless them even if they're not watching God bless them and to all of the Reverend clergy all of you my siblings and friends that make this such a special place and I'm so glad to be connected to such an amazing ministry uh, to this angelic choir behind me my God it, it gets gooder and gooder every time I know that ain't good English but my God today. thank you so much for your ministry and uh I have a, a guest with me, uh, my professor, friend, love him like a godfather, uh, the Reverend Dr. Victor Anderson, professor of uh, ethics and society at Vanderbilt Amen. University. He's no stranger to this church. He has preached here, I think it was about two years ago during Men's Empowerment Month, so he is no stranger to this ministry, a friend of this ministry, and thank you for being here. Thank God for all of you. I, wanna, uh, I won't be before you long if you get with me. Amen. If you don't get with me, then I don't know if you got it, and then we got to we got to stay a little longer. And, 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 and you know, I'm sanctified. I can preach until six o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Would you rise with me out of reference for the Word of God? Saint Luke chapter thirteen. Saint Luke chapter thirteen, verse six. In the New King James Version, it says this, and he spoke also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, he came seeking fruit on it, and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? Wow. For the next few moments, if you'll get with me, I just want to share a message entitled, We Have a Problem. We Have a Problem. God bless you. You may be seated. Pass me not, O gentle spirit.
God, we know that you are here. And as you stop on by 2201 Osage Street, Nashville, Tennessee, won't you stop and see about each and every one of us, those in the building, those that are tuning in even now, and those that might come on days, months later, God. I'm asking that in these next few moments that you would speak to our hearts, that you would draw us closer to you, and that you would meet every need. God, lift every hung down head, encourage every soul, help us to go on and meet the individuals you called us to be. And now, God, I have a tall order. I ask that you take my frail insufficiency, override it with your grace and divinity. And God, use me in spite of me to bless this, your body. And if anything good should happen, I promise I won't be foolish enough to take the credit, but I'll thank you even now for hearing and answering this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have a problem. Um, as a matter of fact, I think that's an understatement. When you look at the world today, when you uh, read the different headlines, when you turn on the television, when you let your phone send you the news alerts, I think that's an understatement. You know, we had a COVID was bad enough, and now we have variants. You know, the Delta variants. I, I just recently heard of the Lambda variants. Uh, we have a problem that went from bad to worse. Our children are being exposed. We have vulnerable populations that were vulnerable before COVID-19 that are now uh, extremely vulnerable and, and otherwise neglected. I'd say we have a problem. Uh, gun control is still an issue in our country. Uh, 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 there are financial disparities that are still issues. There are gender disparities. There are, there are folks that think black lives do not matter. There are so many folks that, uh, that would rather, they would just rather uh, do without and cut them off. We have a problem. Oh, family, uh, it's not just that. I mean, uh, certain things haven't changed, you know. Um, uh, let me, can I tell you about my friend? He was born in West Philadelphia, and on the playground, he spent most of his days. He was chilling out, maxing, relaxing, out, cooling off, shooting some b-ball outside of the school, when a couple of guys that were up to no good, they started making trouble in his neighborhood. He got in one little fight, and his mom got scared. She said, you're moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. I think we have a problem. As a matter of fact, as though I don't describe to the whole song, I just want to borrow a fragment of a line from Jay-Z. It seems like I got 99 problems. Yeah. 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 My God today. There seem to be no shortage of problems. If it ain't one thing, it's the other. And family, we're in St. Luke chapter 13, and we have a problem. You see, Jesus, in the beginning of the chapter, he's trying to really get folks to understand that this, that this experience, that if you're going to be a follower of Jesus, if you're going to be a disciple of Christ, that, 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 that this experience is a 100% experience. It's an all-or-nothing reality. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I learned a song growing up, uh, and it said, I'm pressing on, trying to reach 100, but 99 and a half won't do. You see, some of us, we, I think in our, in, our, in our spiritual walks, we try to play on the river, on the bank. You know that game? On the river, on the bank, right? There's two sides. And, and if they say, on the river, you got to be on the river. And on the bank, you got to be on the bank. And on the river, on the bank, on the bank. Bro, see, I'm already messed up. And if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you got a problem and you're out. Uh, Christianity is not an experience for folks who want to just straddle the fence. As a matter of fact, in the, in the Civil War, there was, there, was a, there was a man who had a home on, on the border, and, and, and he said, well, I'm going to come out one day, and I'm going I'm to get the best of both worlds. And so he had the, the northern blue on top, and he had the Confederate gray uh, as his pants, and, and he walked out, and, and, and the Confederates shot him in the blue, and the northerners shot him in the gray. It, it, it doesn't work out. You can't straddle the fence. Even Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. So if you're going to even entertain the thought of being a follower of Christ, I hope you understand that it's an all or nothing experience. 
And if you're not all in, then save your time. Enjoy your Sundays. Don't send any more money. Don't even bother getting dressed up. Because it would be embarrassing to, 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 to do this not 100% and find ourselves lost. And let me tell you, I don't want to be ordained and in hell. How embarrassing that would be. I don't know what your theology of hell is, but that would, that even the thought of that is just embarrassing. Uh, family, we, we have a problem. He's, Jesus, uh, as he typically does, he, he teaches in parables, and he gives this parable to show that, that again, it's an all or nothing experience. And he says, well, um, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and I have to stop right there because I am uh, agriculturally challenged. I do not have a green thumb. Um... I have killed cacti. <laughs> and I'm from Oakland, California, so the only thing we really grow in Oakland is marijuana. And I don't know nothing about that. So, but what I realized is, is it's about an hour north of Oakland is the Napa Valley, and some would say the wine capital of the world, where there are a very, very uh, um, elite vineyards, uh, and folks from all over come to do wine tastings and everything. And I realized, Oranges grow in orange groves and apples and apple orchards and grapes grow in vineyards, but fig trees don't belong in vineyards. And, and I, I, don't, I haven't figured out who this message is for. I've been praying about this message since Reverend Tara uh, it sent the invitation. And, and so I don't know who it's for. Perhaps it's me, but, but I... I Perhaps there is someone, maybe not in the building, but maybe online, uh, who, who finds themselves like this fig tree in a vineyard. You're in a place you don't belong. Wow. I, I, I'm just going to look down. I know it's bad public speaking, but I don't want anybody to say that I was, I was attacking them, I was talking about them or anything. So, so y'all ain't going to be able to say that. Uh, maybe you're in a marriage in which you never belonged in the first place. Maybe you work a job that you never belonged in. Uh, maybe you attend an academic institution where you do not belong. And so because we find this man, he has a fig tree planted in his vineyard, he comes seeking fruit on it and finds none. And it tells me something, you can look grown and not be growing. That's right, that's right. Oh no, somebody missed that. See, see, you can look grown and not be growing. You can look impressive. You can look like you a Christian, like you go to the New Covenant. They some good folks over at New Covenant. And they love the Lord. And they got good music over there. And they got good preaching. You can look like you're growing, but actually not be growing in real time. I mean, how, how embarrassing would it be to, to be this big, beautiful, seemingly healthy fig tree, but you ain't bearing any fruit. As a matter of fact, a fruit tree only has one job. Yeah, Bear fruit after its own kind. That's like, that's in Genesis, y'all. That's in the creation narrative. Yeah. And how embarrassing it would be to, to look like a Christian. To be a member of a church for years. And bear no fruit. As a matter of fact, it was Jesus who said, uh, no, by your fruit, the world will know you. Yeah. Don't you know the Holy Spirit uh, allows us to bear fruit? Paul tells us in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, meekness, gentleness, and self-control. A family, it's a problem. I feel like the tree of America has not yielded the proper fruit. Uh, they have not delivered on um, the fruit. And it hasn't been just three years like in the text. It's been since 1776, perhaps even before, when even the first uh, enslaved persons were brought over from the continent of Africa. Perhaps even before, when, when, when those who were already in this land, those nations represented, uh, were, were, were infected with diseases and, and mistreated and driven off their own land. America has uh, seemed to not deliver it through. It looks grown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The land of opportunity. Yeah. But not growing. Oh, New Covenant, we have a problem. And so, 
The man who has this fig tree planted says to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years, somebody say three years. I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? In the King James, uh, there's a fun word right there. It says, why cumbereth it the ground? What, what, is, what is being said is, look, um, as a business owner, this is becoming a liability. I can't even write it off uh, as, a, as a hobby. This is bad, it's, it's not profitable, and I have a successful vineyard enterprise, and so I, and maybe I should just cut it out and, and plant more vines, but whatever it is, it's wasting space, and there is nothing more sad yeah, yeah, yeah. than a, a believer who looks grown and ain't growing and is just wasting space. Okay, no, again, I need to just look down so nobody says Eric attacked me this past Sunday, okay? We need to stop Wait, I don't care how good you look. I don't care how educated you are. I don't care what your financial portfolio looks like. I don't care how long you've been a member of this church. Some of us, uh, we may identify as the fig tree in the vineyard. And the question must be asked, why are we wasting space? And honestly, I, I can understand the owner of this vineyard. You know, this this is something's got to change. You had a chance, you know. Even in baseball, you get three strikes. Year one, nothing happened. Year two, nothing happened. Year three, I've been in Nashville three years. Every now and again, I revisit this text and make sure that there has been fruit. Thank you, Jesus. I got a degree that which I came here for. But uh, you know, it, it keeps me accountable, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Because I would hate to ask myself, why cumbereth Eric the ground? Look for three years. I've come seeking fruit on this fig tree and found none. So the direction is cut it down. Why does it use up space? And he replied, keeper of the vineyard, to him saying, Sir, let it alone this year also. And I'm confused, y'all. Because I've had jobs, I've had teachers, I've had coaches, I've had parents. And, and when there is a, 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 when we are not on the same field, when, they, when that person is in a position of authority and they give you a direction, you're supposed to do it. If they say jump, you ask how high. Uh, I'm not understanding because the owner says cut it down and the appropriate response would have been right away. I'll get to it immediately. That's not what the text says. The text says, sir, let it alone this year also. As if, if, if he was a child, the keeper, if this keeper was a child responding to the owner, uh, they would be back talking. Uh, if this was military, this would be insubordination. But in the life of faith, this is the work of advocacy. This is intercession. So I learned it alone this year also. Uh, you know what I realize? A lot of us don't understand intercession. And I'm grouping myself in that because sometimes my prayers sound like, God bless me. Help me. Me get a job. Help me find a wife. Help me do this. Help me do that. Get me this and get me that. And it sounds a whole lot like me, myself, and I. And that is becoming the most unholy trinity ever. Uh, the beauty of intercession is intercession has nothing to do with you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Intercession says, God, I need you to bless Chad. I don't know what he needs. Whatever it is, God, I'm praying for Chad as hard as I would be praying for my own self. Yeah, yeah. I'm celebrating with Chad. That means, that means, you know, you may have a, a lost child, but if someone else's child comes home, you ought to be shouting and celebrating just as hard. Uh, you might have sickness in your own body, but when someone else has victory and deliverance, you ought to rejoice for them. Uh, you, you might be on the
the rocks financially, but when someone else gets that job, or someone else gets that promotion, like you on alert to shout for them. Your marriage might be on the rocks, and you say, Lord, save this, but when God uh, restores somebody else, that's, that's the joy of intercession. Intercession means I'm standing in for someone. I'm so invested, even if it doesn't impact me. Now, the beauty of intercession in this text is that the intercession is not exactly deserved. The tree had one job. It deserves to be cut down. And so now, now, now I'm beginning to understand what, what, what the saints used to say when they say, he looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. Oh, we learn a whole lot in these four verses. Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, we all win. But if it doesn't, after that, you can cut it down. New Covenant, I'm almost done. We have a problem. And as a, there are consequences to that problem. But I'm so glad we have a promise in the person of this gardener. And that promise is made by a, a one who, he's not just a promise maker, they are a promise keeper. And because they are promise keepers, I have a level of trust because there's a plan. He said, look, I, I'm going to take charge of this. This will be my project. I just need one more year. Give me a chance, uh, Mr. Owner or uh, Mrs. Owner or, or friend. Uh, but, but, but just give me the chance. And, 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 and if after the fourth year, it's a wash. Then, then no harm, no foul. But, but again, if it bears fruit, then we all win. Amen. And it's not just a negotiation. It's not just advocacy. There is a the gardener says, wait until I dig around it and fertilize it. Uh, he has to dig around because there are certain things connected to this fig tree that are inhibiting its growth. Amen. There are, remember, it's in a place where it's not growing. It's not conducive to its growth. It doesn't belong there. And so, and so the, 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 the gardener has to come up with a place that, around it. I, I gotta get some things out that never belonged there to begin with. Yeah. I gotta get some of this old, old dirt. I gotta break up the fallow ground. I, I have a plan. I, I gotta get rid of some things. It, it's not conducive to his growth, but I'm not just gonna take things out. I have a plan to put things back in. I'm gonna fertilize it so that it might be more conducive to growth, so that we might see growth in ways that never we've seen before. And family, I'm so glad Because when the gardener, the person of Jesus Christ looked at me, he says, I, I, I know Eric is just a mess. I know he's angry. I know he's unfaithful. I know he doubts. I, 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 I know he's mean sometimes. So I got to dig around Eric. I got to take all of that junk out. All of those things that are, con are not conducive to this world, I gotta disconnect Eric from some people that are not conducive to Eric's group. Amen. Uh, but I'm so glad God doesn't leave us empty handed. Every time God takes something from us, God has a way of upgrading you. And it wasn't Beyonce who first came up with upgrade you, okay? God has a way of giving you what you need and then some, and up supersizing those fries. Come on and say amen. Amen. And so God may take the angerness and the bitterness and the faithlessness out of my heart, but God puts some things in my heart that were never there. God put some things that only God could put. And as a result, I, I begin to experience the fertilization 
of the Holy Ghost. And, and the Holy Ghost begins tenderizing my heart. The Holy Ghost makes me more sensitive. The Holy Ghost allows my heart to break for the injustices in North Nash, across the country, across the world. The Holy Ghost makes my heart sensitive when there is injustice anywhere because it's a threat to justice everywhere. The Holy Ghost makes me sensitive uh, when, when, when there is just, just evil all around. The Holy Ghost makes me more sensitive so that I can turn around and be an advocate. A promise has been made by one who keeps their promises. And that person who made the promise and will keep the promise has a plan. Family, I'm, I'm so grateful. I thought this parable was about a fig tree. It's about a gardener. His name is Jesus. Some call him the lily of the valley. Some the bright and morning star. The fairest of 10,000, the God of every nation. Some call him Mary's baby. Some call him the great I am. But I call him Jesus. And there's still power in that name. There is still power even when I'm looking grown but not growing to make a change. There is still power because uh, the God that began this good work will perform it and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. There's still power in that name because God is yet able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. Family, I am grateful for that gardener who looked at me, the mess that I was, the mess that I still might be today, and stepped in for me. Amen. Oh, don't you know that God was in Christ reconciling the world to God's self? Amen. Don't you know that at one point we were the enemies of God, but, and even while we were yet sinners, it was Christ who advocated for us and died for us. He who knew no sin became sin that we might know the righteousness of God. Family, I'm so grateful for this parable of a good gardener. I'm so grateful because God is a better Savior than we are sinners. And family, I don't know about you, uh, uh, but did you notice that the text ends right there? That's from verse 6 through 9. Verse 10 is, is where uh, you get the encounter, woman thou art loosed. That's a whole nother story. There is no ending. As a matter of fact, I believe that Jesus hands you and I the pen and says, go on and write your own ending. What are you going to look like after the fourth year? You can be bad all by yourself. Are you going to bear fruit or not? Are you going all the way with Jesus? Or not. Family, I don't know about you, but I've decided to follow Jesus. Amen. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me and the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. As a matter of fact, I'm grateful because a greater is the ending of a thing, and God ain't through with me yet. And so when in the story of Eric, uh, don't write me off just yet because I, I, because I have such a great advocate, because Christ is our intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, I, I have some more work to do. I, I'm, I'm upgrading myself, thank you, Jesus. I hope not to look like this next year. I hope to be better, stronger, wiser, uh, uh, more financially stable. Come on and say amen. amen. Family, and, and as a result of this, I can't help but tell the Lord thank you. No, 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 come on. Didn't your mother tell you when somebody does something nice for you, you want to turn around and say thank you? Uh, and, I want to, and, and so sometimes, sometimes I'm a little undignified in the house of God because, because I, I remember those times and those ways when I deserved to be cut down. I, I remember when I was a, a big, giant waste of space. Uh, but when, when God stepped in, don't you understand that I was sinking deep in sin? Far from the peaceful shore, I was very deeply stained within. I was seeking to rise no more. Uh, but the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry and 
from the water. He lifted me. Now safe am I. Well, why? Because love won't just lift you, but love will step in and cover you. And love will be your advocate. Oh, no, don't you remember? God is love. It's not just a cliche. It's a reality. It's my testimony. And love lifted me. And love will lift you. When nothing else could help, love lifted us. Hallelujah. And I'm grateful. I told you I, I was beginning to understand that he looked beyond my faults and he saw my needs. I, I know you think you deserved it, but I know I did it. And so I tell the Lord, thank you, because you didn't have to do it. But I'm so glad, so glad that you did. Oh, I'm getting ready to take my seat. Y'all got with me. I won't hold you much longer. I'm going to be tired and I want more service to preach today. Can I just tell the Lord, thank you. I, I know it in English is thank you. In Spanish is gracias. In Portuguese is muito obrigado. In Japanese it's uh, arigato. In Chinese it's shi shi. Uh, in Nepal it's uh, 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 dani bad. In the Philippines it's salamat mo. In French it's merci beaucoup. In German it's danke schon. In Italian it's grazie. In the hood it's I appreciate it. <laughs> but Lord, I hate you. But you did it. Do it. I'm so glad. So glad. So glad you did. So I don't care if you get with me or not. Because I look back over my life and I take things over. And because I had a great intercessor.
I want to be part of a church where I can grow, where I can be challenged, where I can serve. The doors of this church are always open. Maybe you're watching online and that's still your desire. Give the church a call at 615-320-1590. But if you're saying, look, I just I want to change the story. The pen is in your hand. God will not force you to do anything because that would be abuse but God invites you to make whatever decision you're comfortable with in it and so today we offer Christ to you if that's your desire I'm going to invite you to join me down here front while we offer Christ we offer Christ to you